time about how I caught my mom hooking up with my guy best friend. Claim this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. My best friend and I have known each other for seven years. Let's call him Mark. Mark and I met when we were in school and we have been inseparable since then. Everyone's constantly telling us that we should date, but we're not into each other like that. Last year, my parents started fighting a lot because my dad found out that my mom cheated on him and she cheated on him with my dad's best friend. My mom's the kind of woman that constantly seeks attention from men. And growing up, she weirdly competed with me. Like anytime I liked a boy, she would flirt with him in front of me. So yeah, my mom's not the best when it comes to stuff like that. So when my dad found out that my mom was cheating on him, I basically just wanted to keep the peace. And I convinced my dad to not get a divorce. Huge mistake. Fast forward to two months ago. Mark was just about to turn 20, so I had been planning a birthday party for him. Because of COVID, I was only inviting our immediate family and close friends. And of course, my mom had to interject and wanted to help me plan everything. I told her several times I didn't need her help, but she insisted. Let me just say this. Before any of this happened, it never occurred to me that my mom was even attracted to Mark. I saw him as like a brother to me, so I assumed that she would see him the same way. My mom and dad kept arguing every single day. Mark would come over and he would just let me vent to him. The day of Mark's birthday party is when I started noticing some weird things. My mom, of course, had to drink a lot of champagne, so she was getting a little tipsy. She insisted on dancing with Mark and like making this big scene, so they started dancing. More people joined the dance floor and it became like a real party. A few hours later, I see my mom and Mark sitting on the couch, but my mom is crying her eyeballs out, complaining about my dad, and Mark is just there listening to her. I mean, she's putting him in a weird position. I literally had to peel my mom off of Mark and take her home and put her into bed. Thankfully, Mark just thought it was funny, so he didn't get upset. A few weeks later, I come home and find Mark in the kitchen with my mom. Once again, my mom is drinking and complaining about my dad. And once again, Mark is just listening to her. But here's the thing. My mom was standing there in a bikini, supposedly ready to get in the pool part two. My mom is standing there in a bikini trying to seduce my guy best friend. Disclaimer is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. I asked my mom nicely to go put on some clothes and she refused. So I grabbed Mark's hand and told him to come upstairs with me. I asked him what was going on between him and my mom and he said nothing. And he even said that I was ridiculous for even suggesting something like that. And I believed him, so I let it go. A few days later, my mom is dressed up all sexy in a red tight dress, supposedly making breakfast for my dad and I. But um, my dad had already left for work and I was going to school, so she knew that. I had the feeling that she had Mark coming over and she didn't want me to know. So I got in my car and told her I was leaving for school. Instead, I waited around the corner and I saw Mark driving up to the house. I waited for about 10 minutes and then I quietly pulled into the driveway and opened the door. And what do you know? My mom is sitting on the countertop making out with my guy best friend. And they were going at it. Like if I hadn't gotten there, it would have happened, you know? I slammed the door and my mom jumps off the counter. Mark pretends that nothing's wrong and tells me that he has to go to school. But of course I didn't let him leave. That's when my mom told me that they were in love. And what do you know? Mark confirmed it. That's when my mom basically begged me not to tell my dad anything and that her and Mark were going to continue seeing each other. I told my mom I'd keep the secret, but instead I drove straight to my dad's job and told him everything. He went straight to his lawyer and filed for divorce. When he confronted her, my mom basically said that I was lying and that I had for some reason made everything up. Mark, on the other hand, is totally in love with her but she's telling him to leave her alone so she also broke his heart he doesn't even want to go back to school and he's begging me to get my mom and him back together i told him that that would never happen because my mom is never going to leave my dad my dad makes a lot of money and she has no job he provides her a lifestyle that mark could never now here's the thing my mom's accusing me of being a terrible daughter for telling my dad but how could i not tell my dad i mean am i the asshole here i doubt it but what do you guys think what should i do Am I wrong for threatening to cut my parents off financially to stop my brother from proposing at my wedding? I, 27 male. I'll start this off by saying my wedding is scheduled for April because my fiancé, 25 female, has always dreamed of a spring wedding. And I really like the idea too. I have an older brother though, 30 male, and last Saturday I was called over to my parents' house to talk about something, but they refused to tell me what it was until I got there. They even sat me down with my brother and told me that my brother wants to use my wedding as a perfect day for him to propose to his girlfriend. I hate stuff like that. I get so anxious. I'm like, just tell me now so I don't shit my pants. I was instantly mad and told them absolutely not, but they ganged up on me. I ended up so enraged to the point that I, one man, somehow backed all three of them into a corner. I told them that if they want to do this, they'll not only be uninvited, but I'll also cut off the financial support I've been giving monthly since they paid to have my golden child brother go through college by taking out a second mortgage. I landed a decently high paying job and have been sending $500 to my parents monthly to help ease their mortgage. And I didn't ask for a stake in the ownership of their house either. It was entirely goodwill and I can cut it off anytime. I left without speaking anything more to them, but my brother came to my home the next day to yell at me saying that I ruined his big chance because now our parents are siding with me and say they'll evict him if he tries to propose at my wedding. He said I was financially blackmailing our parents and that he just wanted a good chance to propose because he was afraid his girlfriend might leave him soon. Uh, uh, it's like putting a band-aid on a gashing wound. Like, that's not, the solution is not marriage. And if he tries to propose at my wedding, I will have him thrown out. That's not a maybe, but a definite. I said that was his problem, not mine. Because my wedding day is not about him. And I doubt his girlfriend would appreciate her proposal followed up and being tossed out by a bouncer. 
Honestly, people, does any, I don't think any girl really likes getting proposed to at weddings. Like, I don't know why guys think of this idea. It's so lazy. He yelled a few choice words at me, then went crying to our only surviving grandparent, our maternal grandmother. And she called to try and read me over the phone. No surprise, my brother heavily embellished the version of the story he told her. But she still sided with him after I gave her the real story. She tried to hold her ground, but the verbal backlash I ended up giving her left her crying. Dude, it's like... I'm sorry, you made your grandma cry. That got back to my parents, who are now pissed at me for taking things this far. No, you didn't, your brother didn't. But I told them that I only went that far because I had to when they were all trying to get me to let my brother use my wedding as a springboard for a proposal. They ended up agreeing with me, but still stated they feel like I'm crass. And my brother showed up at my home again to scream at me that I'm an asshole and I hope I'm happy with myself for not allowing him the opportunity. I thought I was entirely in the right at first, but maybe I really did take it too far with my brother. So am I the asshole for everything I did and said to my brother and everyone else? Am I the asshole for making a scene of my adult son and sticking my nose in his marriage? Here's the important background. My daughter-in-law, 32, and son, 33, have three children, aged three years, two years, and four months. He convinced her to be a stay-at-home mom and sell her business by telling her how good of a childhood he had and how happy my marriage was without telling her, in parentheses, which I found out today, that our arrangement was everything before 9 a.m., and after 5 p.m. was split 50-50, Sunday was my day off, and I was brought out twice a week. On to the story. On my last visit, I noticed my daughter-in-law was struggling mentally. So I, my sister, 55 female, and her girlfriend, 53, pulled our money together and paid for a spa weekend for them while we'd babysit the kids for her birthday last weekend. I was preparing on Thursday evening for the kids to arrive when my daughter-in-law rang me, holding back tears, saying, They won't be going because my son's friend came to town and he said he wanted to spend the weekend with his friends catching up. I pressed her a little and I'm talking a little about her situation. She came clean about him doing no chores, no date nights, and her basically doing all of the childcare because, quote, that's what stay-at-home moms do. I was honestly disgusted. I convinced her to drop me off the kids and bring a friend to the spa. I even dipped into my savings to give her 500 pounds to buy herself something nice. When she dropped me off the kids, I begged her to tell me where my son was. After five minutes, she told me the bar. She left for the spa while I left for the bar. Here's where I might be the asshole. I went to the bar where he and his friends were. I sat down next to the group and asked my son, quote, did I fail you as a mother or was it your father? Because we both thought your partner comes before your silly drunk friends. Long story short, I humiliated him and got myself banned from the bar. My daughter-in-law said she will be taking the kids to her parents when she gets back tomorrow, and my son is calling me an asshole for humiliating him, sticking my nose in his marriage. Maybe I should have stayed out. I don't know. Oh, I got I got stuff on this one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Story time about how my husband and my dad got into a fist fight on our wedding day. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. My dad is in the military, therefore he is super strict. He's never liked any of my boyfriends and especially my fiance. My fiance is a musician, so he sometimes doesn't have a lot of income. So my dad thinks that he's absolutely lazy. I have a really good job and I always end up making a lot more than my fiance. This means that I have to make up for his lack of money. So usually I end up paying for most of the bills and my fiance ends up paying for about a third of our rent. And we do live in a nice fancy apartment. Apartment. I mean, we've got a pool, a sauna, there's a bunch of amenities, and most of the time my fiance only gives me about $500 towards rent. My dad knows all of these issues, and trust me, it is an issue for me because I want him to be able to provide for me and our babies whenever I get pregnant, but it really irks my dad. But of course, it really bothers my dad. Every time my fiance and I go over to my parents for dinner, my dad is always making comments about how he doesn't earn enough money, and he asks him, like, how are you going to provide for your family? And that's when my fiance and him usually get into a fight. Our wedding day was quickly approaching, so I wanted to keep a distance between my fiance and my dad. Dad. Everything was good up until the reception. My now husband and I were saying hello to friends. Out of nowhere, my dad tackles my husband down. That's when all hell breaks loose. Part two is up. Part two of how my husband and my dad got into a fist fight on our wedding day. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. So my dad body slams my new husband onto the ground. Then, of course, all of my husband's friends come attack my dad and try to pull him off of my husband. By the way, my dad is super, super strong. Like I said in part one, he's in the army, so he's built and super, super strong. My dad and my husband were pummeling each other. They were even kicking each other on our wedding day. And yeah, yeah, I'm in my wedding dress crying. While everyone else is going crazy. Luckily, I invited a friend and her boyfriend is a cop. So he went up to my dad who was clearly the 
the stronger one in the fight and was able to restrain him. When they were finally separated, my dad started yelling at my husband, calling him a liar and a cheater. And when I heard my dad say that, my stomach dropped. I knew that my dad had my back and that he probably found out something about my husband. My dad grabs my hand and pulls my mom into a separate room. Then he shows me pictures of my husband with another woman in a parking lot. That's when my dad explained to me that he didn't trust my fiance, so he decided to hire a private investigator to follow him around. Remember in part one, I said that I was paying for almost everything in our relationship? My dad really hated this, and he was convinced that instead of going to work, my fiance was spending time with another woman. And guess what? He was right. Of course, my dad felt really bad about causing a whole scene, but that's when he told me that we had to annul the marriage. I honestly didn't know what to do at the time, so I told my dad that I needed to speak to my husband. My friend's boyfriend, the cop, was there the whole time. He took my dad out of the room and then brought in my husband. Of course, my mom stayed in the room with me to have some backup, and we grilled my husband for about 20 minutes. At first, he denied everything, but when I showed him the picture that my dad showed me, he said it was just a friend. Of course, my mom and I weren't buying it. That's when he finally confessed that it was his old girlfriend and that they were just saying goodbye for one last time. That's when he showed me all the text messages between him and his ex, and everything was pretty innocent. I asked him why he didn't tell me that he was going to go see his ex, and he told me that he just didn't want any drama with my dad. The cop brought my dad back in the room. I asked him to stay inside while my dad and my husband and I talked. I explained to my dad everything that happened, but he wasn't buying his story. My dad kept saying that we just needed to get a divorce. My husband was crying and begging me to forgive him. Then my dad started attacking him again. Once again, the cop had to restrain him, and he put him in a chokehold. Part Part 3 of how my dad attacked my husband on our wedding day. This comment is not my story time. I was sent to me on Instagram. My dad attacked my husband for a second time. Luckily, my friend's boyfriend, who was a cop, was there and was trying to manage the situation. Basically, we called off the entire reception. So $7,000 right down the drain. My husband and I were supposed to leave that night to Greece. I told my parents we should still go on the honeymoon and they agreed. But obviously, my dad was really, really upset about it. But while we were in Greece, I caught my husband texting his ex again. This woman texted him saying that she missed him. Then he told her about the fight he got into with my dad. Then she said that my whole family is crazy and that he shouldn't have married into it. I confronted my husband and he told me that he needed her as a friend and that I just needed to deal with it. Then I told him that I was the one that paid for basically everything in our relationship, including most of our wedding and our honeymoon, and that he needed to be grateful to me and to my family. That's when he said that he would never speak to my family again. That's when I told him that the relationship wasn't going to work then. Now that we're back home, my parents really want me to get a divorce, but I'm not sure. Obviously, he has feelings for his ex and so does she, but I mean, I still love him. Why should I lose out? My husband is being super distant and barely talks to me. My dad is upset with me too because I haven't gotten a divorce. Should I just file for divorce? What should I do? Am I the asshole for telling my husband I don't want to give our child his last name? My husband and I have been friends since middle school, dating since junior year of high school, and we got married as soon as I graduated college. We've been married for two years now, and we just found out I'm pregnant with our first child. When we got married, I hyphenated our last names, with my last name being first, because I believe marriage is a union, and taking his last name felt like him claiming ownership over me. My husband was frustrated with this decision, but I stood my ground and was not going to budge. He eventually accepted this, but he did not hyphenate his last name. This bothered me for reasons I can't explain, but I never brought it up as something I had a problem with because I honestly understand. Now I'm pregnant and I wanted to tell him now while we still have 8 months to discuss it that I want to hyphenate our child's last name. He blew up on me telling me how I'm being ridiculous and that I can't actually expect him to be okay with that and he just won't stand for it. I told him I want our child to have our last names. He told me it wasn't his last name, it was mine. I told him that he is a ridiculous one for not realizing how silly he sounded by saying my hyphenated last name wasn't also his name. Side note, before we even got married, he told me he wanted his hypothetical son to have his first name. I agreed, with some reluctancy if I'm being honest, but I love my husband and I love his name. I brought this fact up to him. If we had a son, my husband wants him to have his first and last name, and even if we have a daughter, just will have his last name. I told him that it wasn't fair. I even told him we should put his last name first when we hyphenate, but he was not happy. I went on to say that my sister has constant problems because her son doesn't have her last name, even though the father has never been in any of his life. She gets questioned by doctors and teachers if she's really his mom, and since she's not married, she even has problems with sending him under her husband's crisis. I told them if we ever separated, I don't want those problems. Then he blew up on me again for assuming we would separate, and that's when I finally snapped and told him he was being a stubborn, self-centered man-child. He knew that wasn't what I meant and he was being extremely obtuse. He left to cool down and now I'm getting texts from my mother-in-law saying that I was being unreasonable and manipulative and had to reduce the insults to throw a fit to get what I want, even though I didn't get what I wanted. I can understand he wants his child to have his last name, but I feel like hyphenating it is still giving the child his last name. So, am I the asshole? Um, see, I think, honestly, this is a discussion that you should have had prior to marriage if you were really so passionate about it. Like, yo, by the way, our kid's gonna have both our last names. I don't think it's a fucking big deal. Like, honestly, what I plan to do inshallah i don't know is that i would have the kid's first name my last name as their middle name and then my husband's last name i don't it's just a name to me but teach the role am i the asshole for giving my ex-wife a large amount of money i won despite the anger of my girlfriend i recently won a 
fuck you amount of money. I won't say exactly how much, but it's in the millions. It's enough to change the life of myself and my family. My ex-wife is the mother of my two kids. She is an amazing woman and good to the bone. We divorced six years ago because I had an affair with my current partner. I was in a low place in my life and I fucked up. She was in incredible pain, but... Like a fucking saint, she allowed me to still see our kids who mean the world to me, allowed our divorce to be as pain-free as possible. She was actually the first person I phoned after my mom and pops after I found out I won the lottery. She was pleased for me, joked that I could take the kids on a world round trip, and that was that, nothing else. As soon as I won, I knew I wanted to give her a significant amount, and I feel like this is some small, tiny way I can show her that I'm not a complete fuck up. She deserves to know that I care despite my mistakes. She also works a shitty job in the public library, which pays her peanuts. She would actually be able to pursue her hobbies this way, give our kids a better life between us. I haven't discussed this with my ex yet, but long story short, when I told my girlfriend, she was livid, screaming that I'm disrespecting her, accusing me of still being in love with my ex. My girlfriend is threatening to break up with me, and to be honest, I'm feeling incredibly relieved over the threats. I don't plan on changing my plans, but am I the asshole? Story time about how I lied to my parents about having a boyfriend for four years. This clearance is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My parents are super, super, super strict. Growing up, I could not have any guy friends. I wasn't even allowed to go over to my girlfriend's houses. At school, I was pretty popular, and the fact that my parents didn't let me have any boyfriends made the boys actually want me more, which is something my dad actually hated. Boys would call our house asking to talk to me, and my dad would grill me about it. So I finally decided to tell him that because he doesn't let me date any boys, that boys want me more. He laughed and said that that wasn't true, and that most likely I was just provoking these boys. Obviously, this really upset me. My dad was always really, really controlling. When I turned 16, I decided I wanted to get my own job. This way, I could have some more freedom and just meet more people outside of school. I started working at a local restaurant and quickly made friends with everyone who was working there. They were all pretty much my age, especially one boy. Let's call him Rick. Rick and I hit it off right away. I had a huge crush on him instantly and I could tell that he liked me too. But of course, my strict parents were always present in my mind, so I tried my best to stay away from Rick just so that I wouldn't develop any feelings, which I already had, who am I kidding? One day, Rick asked me if I wanted to take my break with him and I said yes. He sat in his car for 30 minutes and just talked the entire time. I started falling in love with him. We talked so much and he was so kind and so funny. The next few days at work, we were basically inseparable. Finally, at the end of the week, he asked me if I wanted to be his girlfriend and I said yes. Without a moment of hesitation, I said yes, knowing that my parents would not want that at all. So here's when I told him that we needed to keep this a secret. He wanted to just speak to my parents, but I begged him not to. Thankfully, he understood. The only time we were able to spend together was at work. And we did this for a full year. When I turned 17, my parents insisted that I quit my job so that I could focus on school. I pretty much had to listen to them, so I did. This meant that Rick and I barely ever saw each other. Instead, I decided to sneak him into my house every single night. Part two is up. So I started sneaking my boyfriend into my room every single night. This claim is not my story time. It was sending me on Instagram. My parents had literally no idea. I snuck my boyfriend Rick into my room every single night for a full year. The only time we ever got close to getting caught, the smoke alarm in our house went off. And as soon as we heard it, Rick jumped out through my window. My room was on the first floor, so this wasn't really an issue at all. I finally graduated from high school and started going to college. It became way easier to hide my relationship from my parents because I was living in a dorm. Rick would come visit me every single weekend and my parents would come to visit me every now and then. Even when I was in college, you guys, my parents were still super strict. So one day, I decided to ask my dad when I could have a boyfriend. He said when I was living under my own roof and paying my own bills. So the following year, that's exactly what I did. I was able to get a good job in my field, and so did Rick. So we put our money together and his parents helped us to get an apartment. But here's the thing, I didn't want my parents to know that I had a boyfriend this whole time. So instead, I told them that Rick was my roommate who I met in college, and that I finally just decided that I wanted my own freedom. My dad was really proud of me for taking the initiative, which was crazy to me. He said he was proud of me. My mom, on the other hand, definitely did not want me moving in with some guy. So I I invited Rick over to my parents' house. They met him for a little bit and they actually liked him. Fast forward six years, Rick and I are married and my parents don't know that he was my boyfriend for four years. They think that we started dating after we moved in together. I kind of want to tell my parents, but I'm not sure. I think they would get really, really upset and possibly not speak to me. What do you think I should do? Am I wrong for rescheduling my friend's bachelorette party? My female 24, friend female 24, I've known about for 10 years is getting married in August. I am the maid of honor. We booked our hotel room in January. Party was planned for the end of May. I don't live in the same city as a bride, so her and the other girls in the bridal party are planning on driving to me, which is a three-hour drive. I just found out that a trip me and my mom have been planning to Europe this spring for the last three years was already canceled once in 2020, has been canceled again due to low numbers in tour. Our travel agent had another tour we could choose that is for sure a go, but it would be interfering with the bachelorette. Travel agent said other tours later in the year are also not a guarantee and prices could change. 
I messaged the bridal party and apologized for needing to change the date, and I explained that this is a trip that is important for me and my mom, and we have limited options. The girls agreed to change the date to the end of April, and I spoke with the bride on the phone, and all seemed well, and she said she understood and was optimistic everything would work out. The next day, she messages me saying it's not going to work. We talk on the phone and she says the rest of the girls don't want to change the date as it is inconvenient for them and their schedules. As well, another friend was planning to fly in from another city. I had messaged her already to apologize. She had previously told me that flights were cheap and she also has family here or could visit the bride at the end of May if she couldn't change the flights. I told the bride that my mom told the travel agent to book this new tour and my mom is not changing it again. I asked why we couldn't pick another weekend when almost all of the girls have weekends off. I told her that if we don't change the date, then I will not be at the bachelorette. She said, I guess you won't be then. After, I messaged the bridal party group chat to explain to the girls I can't change this trip now and that there is a lot of money wrapped up in it. I said sorry again and just asking why they can't make another date work. I also gave the option that some could drive in on Saturday if not able to on Friday due to work. Another bridesmaid sent a huge message saying it was disrespectful that I expect five people to change their schedule for just me and that she knows I can easily change my trip to another date and that I don't get to make calls on the driving schedule. I stated I was not trying to disrespect anyone and was just giving options so that things could work out. I told her she was out of line for calling me disrespectful. I also was speaking to the bride on her own chat and I said I feel like she isn't backing me up on this and I feel hurt she is willing to exclude me. She said she doesn't have the confidence that I'll be there for her on her wedding day and that this isn't all about me. It's supposed to be about her. So am I the asshole? I've been with my partner for four and a half years, and everything in our relationship is really good. Great, even. We have so much fun together, and he looks after me well. But we've had one consistent issue in our relationship from the start. We have an open phone policy, and I've never felt the need to go through his phone because I was never suspicious of him for any reason. But when I was going through his photo library to send myself some photos we took on his phone at an engagement party... I discovered he had been screenshotting and saving photos of my three best friends, housemate, and his close female friends, and other girls we know for his, uh, bank. Absolutely not. I confronted him because obviously this made me super uncomfortable and I felt like it was disrespectful to me and to all of our girlfriends. He promised this behavior would end, but over the last four years, I keep accidentally stumbling across the same thing time and time again, which was terrible for my self-esteem because I now knew what he was thinking of when my friends or his friends were around. Recently, I had the feeling it was happening again due to the bathroom doors being locked during extra long showers. I checked his phone hoping I was wrong and I could put my suspicions to bed, but it was worse than I ever could have imagined. He had been logging into my accounts on my laptop when I wasn't home and going through my messages with my girlfriends and stealing lingerie pictures they had sent me when trying on some new stuff before and other photos of my friends they had sent me in complete confidence, plus accessing my friend's private accounts on my laptop, taking photos of the pics on the accounts that he liked, and then wiping my history. He went so far as to crop all the pictures nicely. This was well thought out. There was also pics of his ex-girlfriend, who we still hang out with, and a lot of the photos of these girls were just normal selfies of their faces, which made it super personal. He promised to stop this time, but I keep hearing that, not to mention the trust is gone, and now when I check his phone, everything is a little too squeaky clean. I've also had issues in the past where I have had to call him out on extremely flirty texts to his girlfriends, and he swears he didn't realize it looks that way, and he's just naive. He would get super angry at me if I felt uncomfortable by how close he was getting to these girls. And now that I know he was using their photos in his alone time, I feel like I absolutely had reason to be worried and feel gaslit as fuck. I feel like my best friends deserve to know he's logged onto my laptop multiple times over the last four years and stolen photos of them from me so they can block him if they wish. But how the fuck do I tell someone that kind of thing? My best friend thinks I should tell all the other girls involved. Little does she know, she's one of them. Am I the asshole for not changing my baby's name again after I changed it for my sister once already? I have a nine-year-old daughter and another on the way. I had two grandmothers, Annie and Rose. I named my oldest Annabelle. I did not name her after Nana Rose at the time she was born. Nana Rose was still with us. When I found out I was pregnant with a second, I decided to name her after Nana Rose, who passed in 2017. My sister Lucy got pregnant about five months before me. She says that she wants to name her baby Rose after Nana Rose. I say our kids can share the name. She says I already have Annabelle and I could have named her Annabelle Rose or something, but passed on the chance. So I can't also have Rose. I figured this is not the hill to die on. So I say I'll look for something else. I then crack open a baby book. And after a few entries after Rose is Rosalie, 
It's perfect. Honors Nana, doesn't piss off Lucy, and my boyfriend loves it. Lucy finds out the new name and says it's lovely and she approves, which annoys me, but I say nothing. This all takes place in the eighth month of her pregnancy, third month of mine. So I don't even know the gender yet, and this is all a hypothetical. A couple weeks later, Lucy gives birth. She announces that her daughter's name is Rosalie. At this point, I'm really annoyed because I went to great lengths to leave the name Rose available, and she's nicked my choice. Mom calls me to say she knew what Lucy was planning and hopes I'm not upset because this means I can now name my incoming daughter Rose, except now I'm attached to Rosalie. Wow. The best thing to bring two girls together is being cheated on by the same man. So this is my best friend. And around the beginning of February last year, she got into a relationship with a man. And we'll go ahead and call this guy Bronson. So they had known each other for about two years prior and had talked on and off. But February of last year, they finally decided to get together. And he was like her ideal man. He was tall, Sagittarius, and had a country accent. And let me just tell you, he even charmed all of her friends. I straight up thought he was so good for her. That was until the bachelorette party. So she was a bridesmaid and I was a maid of honor and a wedding. And we noticed while we were out, her text messages got muted. And so we decided to look at his snap location. And it was not where he was usually supposed to be. Spence texted him the next morning and was like, hey, did you cheat? And he completely denied it. So we chose to believe him until he fessed up two days later. We literally found the girl's TikTok later that day. He said he wouldn't cheat on her again as long as she didn't cross state lines again. And that remained true for two months. Part two to my best friend meeting her roommate. So even though Bronson had cheated on her, they decided to go ahead and try to make things work. Sometimes people make mistakes in relationships and things can be fixed. Two months went by and everything seemed fantastic. This leads us to our date night. So Spence and Bronson were both asleep but then she woke up to his phone literally blowing up. She went over to go check it because Bronson wasn't waking up and it was just one of his guy friends blowing up his phone. So being worried that he might be in trouble or some kind of danger, she went ahead and decided to pick up the phone. Well, a girl answered on the other end and it wasn't just any girl, it was his ex-girlfriend. And she was just as confused as Spence was. So they were still seeing each other while she thought that Spence was just a friend and Spence thought that she had been totally blocked. But he had just changed her ID contact to one of his best friend's names so that she wouldn't question anything. We'll call her Ashley and they decided to meet up to discuss everything. And long story short, they ended up kicking him out and moving in together. But if you want more details on that, we can give a part three and four. Follow me on Instagram if you want to send in your story. So in the summer of 2020, my baby daddy was working as a... <clears throat> salesman. But obviously, there is a lot that can go wrong with this. So at the time, we were making bank and getting that bag. Literally, I kid you not, five grand every couple of days. So you can say we were doing pretty well for ourselves at that time. But one particular night that he had a sale, I had a really bad gut feeling. These people asked to meet him about a block away from our house. And this sales product was worth about $3,500. But he had already made about $1,700 this morning, so I was kind of concerned about this next sale. I was laying in my room about to tell him not to go when he just went ahead and left. And that's when I heard yelling from down the block. I was like, oh my god, and I looked out my window and there was four guys surrounding him with masks on. That's when I heard my baby daddy yell for me to bring the money. I immediately said okay and started to rush to grab everything. As I was running down the stairs with the money and approaching them, I noticed that one of the guys had a gun to the back of my baby daddy's head. Follow my Insta for part two. Story time part two about my baby daddy having a bad um, sale. So as I start to go to them, they start to head up the stairs to me. And as we're approaching each other, I can see that one of the guys has a gun to the back of my baby daddy's head. Another guy has a knife to his throat. And the other one just looks like he was the muscle of the group. They were literally walking to come to our house. I made sure it was entirely pitch black within my place so that they couldn't see anything that was there. And I just brought them the money. I was like, take it, here it is. And he just stared at it. And then I said a little bit louder, take it. And he was just looking at it. And then I screamed, take it, it's here. And that's whenever he took the money and started to push my baby daddy up the stairs. I was pushed to the side as they looked around to see if they could take anything else. But they obviously couldn't see anything and just left. Neither of us slept for several days, thinking that they would probably come back. But thankfully, they never did. My baby daddy is still a salesman to this day. We're just more cautious, and I'm working on getting my education so I can get a study job. If you have a story, DM me on Insta. So one time I decided to get revenge on my boyfriend by hooking up with his brother and glitter bombing his car. So back in March of 2020, I was working at this little travel stop. It's where a lot of the truck drivers would come in, and I ended up meeting this really charming guy. He would stop by there often, and he was really sweet and funny, and we had a really good connection. So we decided to start dating. But immediately after, it got very toxic. While we were clearly in a relationship, he never wanted to put a label on things. And we would get into extremely violent fights where he would threaten to slap me or beat me. I would usually retaliate by calling him out for being a really bad father. But also, when we were doing the nasty, he would say really weird things. Like, I'm going to breed you, or trap me, I'm thinking boy. 
That's a really scary thing to say in bed. Ignoring all these red flags and continuing to date him, I figured out why he didn't want to put a label on things. It was obviously because he was cheating. I was upset and I told his brother about what was going on, and his brother came up with an idea for us to hook up together. And this continued to happen for a while until I felt like it wasn't good enough, and I decided that his car was going to be next. Like for part two and follow me on Insta. Part two of how I plotted revenge on my boyfriend by hooking up with his brother and glitter bombing his car. So by this time, I'd been hooking up with his brother in our house for a while, but the way that my boyfriend was treating me was just getting worse and worse. We got into a massive blow-up fight, and he told me that I needed a week to get my ish together and get out. But I ended up going out with my friends and drinking for a little bit, so I was kind of in my feels, and I decided to reach out and text him to see if he would want to work things out with me. But instead, he cussed me out, so my friend came over with a bunch of glitter. So we literally poured glitter all over his seats, all over his floors, and I decided to go ahead and smash his taillights and side view mirrors while I was at it. To this day, he still doesn't know that that was me. He also let me know that he was not fond of strippers and that he would never date someone that was a stripper. So after we broke up, I decided to become one. And he would still continue to message me saying that he was going to come see me at the club. So I guess he is down to date strippers and the revenge was honestly worth it. If you guys have a story that you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. So this is about the time that I ended up dating a guy in order to cover up for dating another guy. So I was kind of sort of low-key cheating at the time. But I can explain. So to provide a little bit of backstory, I was living with my biological father at the time. Not exactly what I wanted to do, but this was because of some circumstances that were going on. So due to this, I had to move to a new school and start my senior year at a different place. A few days had started and I didn't really like it very much, so they ended up changing my classes around. And I got stuck in this new art class. So I walked in and immediately this cute guy walked in. He introduced himself, I'll call him Brad, and he said, hey, and we ended up talking the entire class period so not only was he cute but he had an amazing personality as well so obviously i had to give him my number there's no other option that night he texted me how pretty i was and how he was dying to get to know me but the text got a little bit explicit and my father ended up going through our text messages and immediately did not like this man right off the bat so when we started dating i didn't get his approval either my dad made us break up i still liked this man and was completely heartbroken when i went to school the next day i was told by another guy that he liked me so i ended up coming up with a little plan stay tuned for part two and follow me on insta Story time part two about how I was dating a guy in order to cover up for dating another guy. So after my dad forced me to break up with the guy that I was currently dating because he didn't like him, and I realized that this other guy at school did like me, I figured that I would talk to Brad and tell him this little plan that I had. This new guy that liked me was very cute, but not my type at all, but he did have a better standing with my father. So I decided to start dating the guy that my dad liked, but also dating Brad on the low key. Every single art class, I would spend time with Brad, and I would text him all day, and we would FaceTime at night, but then I would go on dates with the other guy. That way it would be like a cover for my dad, so he really wouldn't go through my phone. Well, yes, I was two-timing and this was extremely exhausting. I really felt like I screwed up when I started to develop feelings with the new guy. I tried to literally list off reasons on why I didn't like this guy, but honestly, he was just too caring and too sweet for me not to. So I ended up breaking up with him because I felt like this was going too far, and I got back with Brad and just did it behind my dad's back. But Brad then left me for his ex, so I ended up sneaking over to the other guy's house and that's how I lost my virginity. Now I'm happily married to a totally different guy three years after this whole situation. If you guys have a story you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. This story time is a warning to please be cautious if you ever speak to someone over the internet. So when I was 14 and still in high school, my local area was going through a weird stage where someone was trying to contact a lot of the 14-year-olds and see if they wanted to join an escort agency. This was done over Facebook, and of course, most of the girls just ignored these messages. However, my friends and I thought it'd be funny if we ended up messaging this person back. Obviously, bad idea. We weren't serious about meeting up with this person. We really just thought it was a big joke. However, once I was by myself, I continued to message this person. They kept commenting on how beautiful I was and said that I was like a sister to them. I was obviously very impressionable at 14 years old and was wanting all the attention I could get, so I continued to message the person on the other side of the phone for the next couple of weeks not realizing that I was being groomed. After the next couple of weeks I was sitting in class and I got an extremely panicked message from my mom saying that I need to come home immediately and that she needs my phone. I guess a family friend of ours had told her about the messages and had also seen a lot of the escort advertisements so my mom read through the messages quickly called the police and the conclusion was to block the account and be more careful next time. I thought it was case closed but I was wrong. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time part two on how I was groomed over the internet at the age of 14. So after the police took several statements from my mom and I, and I was told to block the account and just be more cautious, I thought everything was done. But three years later, I was sitting with my friends when I got a phone call. The police had contacted me saying that my statement had come up again in another case. This is when they let me know that it wasn't an escort agency at all. It was a man who was sitting by his computer and messaging young girls to come meet him. He had been doing this to hundreds of girls for the past 15 years. The next couple years of my life were filled with police interviews and statements, waiting for actions for me and his other victims. The guy had a trial but pleaded not guilty, which meant that we all had to go to court. The court date was set, but obviously the coronavirus became a huge issue. And it was set to be moved to another date, which I was very thankful about because I was seven months pregnant with my daughter and just overall fearful of what would happen. So this guy had a warrant out for his arrest and he didn't show up for his plea bargain. So he was put out as a missing person, which we were all notified of, but that scared me to death. However, we ended up getting a phone call recently saying that they found the man and he had taken his own life. And that's how everything ended. I hope everyone stays safe. And if you have a story you'd like to share, follow me on Instagram and DM me.
story time about my emotionally abusive ex-fiance and his psychotic family. So when I started college, I met this guy on Facebook. And I mean, he was a dreamboat. We hit it off immediately and I knew that he lived in my hometown, even though I was out of state for college. And when I tell you this guy was sweet, I mean, he could put Nicholas Sparks novels to shame. While looking back, a lot of the stuff was cringy, he was my first relationship. Well, one day when we were on the phone, he was talking about how excited he was to be married one day and adopt animals together. I was totally excited about it with him, and he decided to propose on the phone, on the spot. He was like, please don't embarrass me, I'm down on one knee in front of everyone right now. And so I just said yes. Well, I thought this was the beginning of my happy ending, things got worse. He became extremely obsessive and controlling. He would blow up my phone whenever I was in lectures and get a hold of the college admissions office when I wouldn't respond, and would yell at me if I fell asleep because he thought I was ignoring him. I would literally wake up to text about him hurting him himself or selling my nudes. I was so scared that he was actually going to do something crazy that I left school and started driving back to my hometown. Once I got there, I met his family and realized just how messed up everything was. You won't believe what happens next. Follow me on Insta in the meantime. Story time about my emotionally abusive ex-fiance and his psychotic family. So once I got to town, I was finally able to meet his family, and he told them that I went to an Ivy League school and got in only because I was autistic, which was just untrue. I immediately noticed that the relationship between his mom and him were completely off. They both had each other as their wallpaper on their phone, and she acted as if she had a crush on him. When we decided to introduce both of our families together, his mom told my mom that she's sad that I don't look more like her because she's beautiful, then proceeded to say that it's nice that her son spends so much time with me even though I'm homely looking. She was also a therapist and claimed that it was her job to manipulate people and control their minds. Yeah, I bet that's the person you want to see when you're down. Because my boyfriend was in the military when he went back overseas, I was pretty much forced to be on Skype with him 24-7. It didn't matter where I was, and if I didn't respond, he would post horrible things about me on Facebook. Or he would send me videos of cats or puppies getting eaten by snakes to get back at me. I didn't watch them because they were so upsetting, but I was still too scared to leave him and I was entirely sleep deprived. Stay tuned for what's next and follow me on Instagram. Story time about my emotionally abusive ex and his psychotic family. So I was still not prepared to leave him and had to be on Skype with him all the time. In the bathroom or in the shower. If I refused and asked for privacy, he'd tell me how horrible and how ugly I was. And that he'd end his life because of my cruelty. The only time that I didn't have to talk with him was whenever I was hanging out with his mom. And when I did this, she would spend the entire time talking about him. She would tell stories about him and show me pictures. And in the pictures she took of him, he was either shirtless or sleeping. And the weirdest thing is that she said she taught her son how to be a good lover. Whatever that means. She would also frequently tell me that I was going to hell for having sex with him. And she only knew this because she would log into his messages and read them. She talked about my body all the time and tried to give me tips so I could be prettier. This went on for months until I eventually made the decision to break up with him. And I had to move in with a friend because he kept sending scary things to my house. He would send stuffed animals with their limbs or head removed. He would also send empty envelopes, probably just trying to get me to come outside. Not long after this, he sent his cousin to try to kidnap me. And he said that he was doing this all in the name of love. Thankfully, this is over now. But if you have a story you want to share, follow me on Insta. So story time right now. And yes, I have leftover eyeliner from this morning's makeup, um, but we're not gonna talk about that. So back when I was with my toxic celeb ex, there were a lot of things that if I did, they would bother him. For example, if I stared at my phone for too long, I'm talking about like longer than 30 seconds, he would automatically assume that I was texting some guy. <laughs> I know. Sometimes he would even get mad if I asked to spend time with him because that would mean that I was trying to make up for something bad I did. So one time, I asked him if he wanted to have dinner. So I went to Trader Joe's, I picked up some really nice stuff. I went to his house and I made us some paninis. The whole time I was cooking, he was in his office watching stuff on his laptop. Moving on. Finally, I tell him to come have dinner and we sit down to eat. He was completely quiet. Then he asks me, what did you do? And I'm like, what do you mean? That's when he told me that I must have done something really bad in order for me to want to make dinner for him. So obviously I said nothing, I just wanted to spend some time with you. We haven't seen each other in a while. You see, we would break up like every two weeks. And the whole time we were together, there was a handful of times where we actually went to dinner or even spent time together. The rest of the time, it was him in his office, me hanging around his house and eventually just saying, I'm gonna go home. So he says, no, I don't believe you. Something's up with your face. And then I said, what do you mean? He says, you look different. I was like, I can't change my face, dude. 
Then he grabbed my phone, started looking through it. And when he didn't find anything, he got even more upset. That's when I had to make up a lie. Like I literally had to come up with something bad I did because he was not letting it go. And in order for me to prevent him from getting even more upset and making it, you know, turn into something else, I told him that I had an audition. He hated when I had auditions to him. It was like the end of the world. It meant that I was gonna go see some guy. Even if I showed him the email for the audition, he still wouldn't believe me. He even suggested once that my agent was pimping me. Ah, oh, there are so many more story times connected to all of this. So I told him I had an audition. Mind you, I didn't even have an audition. I was just making it up. So the next day I literally pretend to go to an audition. I stayed there for like five minutes and then I went back to my apartment. He calls me to check up on me and I say, I went to the audition, it was fine. That's when he tells me not to bother to go to his house ever again. He broke up with me. Moral of the story, if you are with someone toxic who has to control, know everything about you, who doesn't even want you to continue your career, who doesn't want you to hang out with friends, drop them, just drop them. So I've got a little lunch meeting, so I'm gonna do a little get ready with me story time. A lot of you know that as a kid I was bullied in school and recently someone who bullied me in school reached out to me on Instagram. I had a lot of pet peeves in school, I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild in Love with Coco Primer Serum. A huge pet peeve of mine in school was when kids talked a lot in class. So there was always this one girl that would talk so much, like she could never shut up and she was constantly getting in trouble and being taken to the principal's office. And yes, this is the girl that DM'd me. So like I said, this girl would talk so much in class, like her and I never really ever spoke at all. And another pet peeve of mine was when kids blamed other kids for things they did wrong. And this girl would like do things on purpose and then blame it on other kids. Now I'm using the In Love With Coco face mist. So one day this girl decides to mess with the teacher. This girl had the bright idea to go and grab dirt at lunch and put it in the teacher's coffee mug. Now I'm using the In Love With Coco palette. Um, yes. I'm picking up this tan shade and I'm putting it in my crease. So mind you, this girl did it in front of everyone. So we all knew it was her. The teacher comes over to the desk and sees her coffee mug full of dirt. And she's like, who did this? And this girl stands up and says, oh, Esther did it, I saw her. Then she looks at all the other kids and says, right? We all saw her and literally no one says anything. Unfortunately, at that time, I was not very good at defending myself. So I just said, no, it wasn't me. So then the teacher says, come with me to the office. With my finger, I'm just gonna dip into this shimmery shade. So I got put in detention and this teacher for the rest of the time that I was in school did not like me. Then a rumor started going around saying that I was actually trying to poison the teacher. And we all know who made that up. I'm gonna dip into this shade. Fast forward to a week ago, who do I see a DM from? So here I took a screenshot. I blurred out her name. She says, I hope you remember me. We used to be best friends. I wanted to ask you a favor. My boyfriend follows you and it worries me. Could you block him? And also I'm Anika too. I would love to be in your TikTok video. Please let's support each other as women. This made me laugh. Like when were you and I best friends? I'm using the Coca Love face palette and I'm gonna bronze. Oof, that looks good. And also like, girl, if you are that worried about your boyfriend just following me, you should not be with that guy. And then to ask me to put her in a video, like what? Support each other? What? I mean, just her telling me that her and I used to be best friends. Like, girl, do you think I'm dumb? Now I'm using the In Love With Coco lip liner. This is the perfect shade of brown, like, Oh my god. So I thought we should play a game. You guys tell me what I should reply. I will pick one of your comments and send it to her and then I'll give you guys an update. In love with Coco lip gloss. Oh my god, this smells so good. Final look. Don't we all love a monochromatic moment? I'm so excited to start reading you guys' comments and send one to her. But I'm not gonna be the mean girl that she was to me. Facts, baby.